Hi, this is Alan Moore, Certified Financial Planner and Founder of Serenity Financial Consulting. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about how you can become a better consumer of research. Now we are constantly inundated with research. Marketers are using it to influence and understand your spending patterns. Social scientists use it to understand human behavior. Uh, but in the end, you need to understand what research is valid, how to tell if it's valid, and, and to know which research studies you can trust. The first thing to know is who paid for the study. Now there is an inherent human element and human bias in research. And sometimes it seems like it, would, it wouldn't be there, but it, it pretty much always is. How you ask the questions, what questions you ask, the order in which you ask the questions, how you interpret the findings, these are all things that the researcher's bias will affect. So if someone is paying for a research study, is it, you need to understand if they could benefit from positive results or if their company would be damaged from negative results. It doesn't necessarily mean the research study is bad, it just means that you need to be aware of it. If a tobacco company puts out a study that says smoking cigarettes is good for your health, you just want to be cautious of that. The second thing to be aware of is you want to know who is distributing the research. Now, chances are you are not reading the actual research study. Very few people are opening up the, the uh, journals and reading the, what the researchers wrote. So you're probably reading the interpretations from a writer, a journalist, a blogger, someone else. You need to be aware of who is interpreting their findings. Truth be told, very, well, I won't say very few, but not all journalists have training in research methodology. They have not taken basic statistics courses, much less a course in how to interpret research findings, how to be critical of research methodology. So anytime you're reading someone's interpretation of research, be aware that they may not have training um, in research methodology at all. The third thing to know is the difference between correlation and causation. Now this is one of the hardest things for students of research to learn, is the difference between correlation and causation. Now causation refers to when one thing affects the other. One thing causes another thing to happen. So you smoke cigarettes and therefore you get lung cancer. Okay, Smoking cigarettes causes the lung cancer. Now, co co correlation, on the other hand, is when two things happen at the same time. So for instance, um, young girls that have an eating disorder watch a lot of soap operas. Did watching the soap operas cause the eating disorder? Did the eating disorder cause them to watch soap operas? Or was there maybe a third variable? Maybe these girls had body image issues and therefore watched soap operas and because they had body image issues, therefore they had an eating disorder. What you need to know is that showing cause and effect, showing causation is incredibly difficult in research. Most research shows correlation. So anytime someone says that they're interpreting research findings that one thing caused another, be very cautious. The fourth thing you need to know is that statements of fact are not research. The researchers are trained to not use terms like all or none, always, anything like that. They tend to use softer language such as many, even most, few, some, because research relies on averages. Everybody is not something. It's very difficult um, you know, to, to create a census around a topic. Uh, you may hear statements like the research proved that such and such. That is not research. If someone is telling you that a research study proves something, you need to be very wary. So let's see what you learned. In the, in the uh, description, there's a link to a great commercial by 5 Hour Energy. I want you to click on that link and keep the four elements that we talked about today in mind as you, read, or as you watch this video. Now this video is a commercial done by 5 Hour Energy in which an actress is talking about a research study that they conducted. I want you to t I want you to watch the video and think about what you've learned. Be critical and I want you to share your thoughts in the comments below. My takeaway from this video is that the uh, 5 Hour Energy is trying to portray that 73% of doctors would recommend 5 Hour Energy to their patients. 
But if you listen carefully and you have to read the fine print, what, what has actually happened is that 53% of doctors would recommend five hour energy to their healthy patients that are already taking an energy supplement. Now, how many patients of a doctor are healthy? And how many of those healthy patients are taking five hour energy? And even more importantly, how was the question even framed? I think there's a pretty good chance that the doctor simply said, if I had a healthy patient that was taking an energy supplement, I would recommend a low calorie energy supplement and five hour energy is low calorie. So therefore, yeah, I'd recommend it. That is not what the commercial portrays. So what do you think? Have you ever seen other uh, research studies that, had, that were poorly interpreted or that maybe were just flat out bad research studies? Please feel free to share in the comments below. That's all we have for today. Thanks for joining me.